Good afternoon. I'm your host, Sherri Ann Richardson, and today we're going to talk about preserving and using holiday leftovers. And you know all of you have them, and you get sick of turkey. You get sick of all the leftovers, the pies, the cakes, the mashed potatoes, the vegetables. But you hate to throw them out because, after all, it did cost quite a bit of money to buy all that food, and it took you quite a bit of time to make it. So what do you do with it? Well, you can eat turkey for the next week, or you can eat turkey for a couple of days, and then you can preserve the rest of the meal, and you can use it later. Some of you may want to send all the extras home with your kids or other family members, and maybe they don't want to say no, but they really don't want to take it either because, you know, everybody's got leftovers and everybody wants to pawn them off. So go ahead and preserve them. And here's how you can do it. With your turkey, most of you know you can pick the turkey off the bone and you can save it and you can make turkey salad or you can have turkey sandwiches or you can make turkey and noodles. But did you know that you can save the turkey bones too? If you have a cat, you may have a tendency to put the turkey bones outside and let the cat eat it. But instead of doing that right away, put that turkey carcass in a freezer bag. Now, you may need a two-gallon freezer bag or you may need to bust the carcass up a little bit. Put it in your freezer, and when you have time, put that entire carcass, bones and all, everything, the leftover bits of turkey, all of it that's left hanging on it, into a big stainless steel pan or whatever kind of big pan you have, cover it up with water and boil it down, and you will get a lovely turkey broth. Of course, you'll need to change or strain the broth through cheesecloth so you don't end up with any of the bones or the little bits of gristle or whatever in your broth. But then you can can that broth. So if you don't want to use it right away, you can preserve it. You can also freeze the broth. This is a great way to use it later in the season when maybe you have a taste for turkey and noodles, but you don't want to go out and buy a whole turkey, and you don't want to buy a can of turkey from the store. Turkey broth, at least around here, is a little harder to find. Chicken and beef broth and vegetable broth are very common, but not turkey broth. And, of course, when you get done with that, then you can take it out to the cats or whoever you want to feed and give the leftover bits away because, as we know, cats can eat bones. Our guest call in line today is 347-215-8604. And I want to invite you to call in today and maybe share with us some of your ways that you use up holiday leftovers, some of the ways that you preserve them. Um, Again, that number is 347-215-8604. And I want to tell you about, while I'm waiting on some callers to call in before we go into our next segment, I want to tell you that we are streaming Goat TV live today on Ustream. You can go to Ustream and you can look up the feed there or you can go to my website, experimentalhomesteader.com. That is E-X-P-E-R-I-M-E-N-T-A-L-H-O-M-E-S-T-E-A-D-E-R.com. And you can view the feed from there. Right now we have Johnny, the Leicester long wool sheep, that is clearly visible. Um, The other goats and the sheep, you can hear Leonardo snorting. He does that during this time of year because, of course, goats are mating. And the other thing, while you're over on my blog, we are having a book giveaway and blog tour today. The book is No Nonsense Vegetable Gardening. And do stop in. Leave a comment for Donna and Stephen, who are the authors of the book, and get entered to win that. The giveaway is at midnight tonight. Okay. The other items that you may have left over from your holiday meal are vegetables. And everybody wants to make plenty and make sure that everybody that comes to your meal has plenty to eat. But what are you going to do with these vegetables that are left over. Maybe you have a few, maybe you have a lot. Well, here's what you can do with them. You can gather them all together. You can put them individually or combine them and put them in a freezer bag. Put them in the freezer. Be sure you mark on the freezer bag what it is you put in it and put the date. 
And then later, you can use these vegetables to go into vegetable soups. If you keep them separate, you can pull them back out, and you can just heat up small amounts for a meal later on. I wouldn't suggest because they're already cooked canning them, but again, if you're putting them in a vegetable soup and you're going to can that, then that's a little bit different. Keep in mind the seasonings that you use if you do make a vegetable soup because those seasonings may change the taste of the vegetable soup a little bit, but it's a great way to use those up. And if you don't want to do that, if you have chickens, you know those chickens are going to love those vegetables. And if you have too many to feed at all at one time, freeze them. Bring them out, thaw them a little bit, and take them out and offer them to your chickens or other poultry. And I guarantee they will eat them, and it's going to save you a little bit on feed costs too. Cakes and pies. There's always an abundance at holiday time. And you really hate to make just a small cake or pie when you could make a large one, or maybe even you make several. And... So what can you do with those? Well, if you make a cake, you simply freeze it if it's frosted, and you want to freeze it without any kind of wrapping on it. If you have one of those cake plates that have the lid on it, put it in that, set it in your freezer, make sure it's setting flat. This way you don't damage the icing. Let it freeze, bring it back out of the freezer, wrap it in saran wrap, and then put that into a freezer bag. You may need a two-gallon freezer bag to do this. If you don't want to freeze the whole cake as it is, you could cut it into slices, which would make it perfect to put in the kids' lunch box or even take for you or your spouse to work, to eat, or have for a snack. This way you get the most for your money, and again, you're not throwing too much food out to eat and wasting it. Okay, now if it's not frosted, you can go ahead and wrap it and freeze it. If it is frosted, you may want to get a cake box to put it in just to make sure it doesn't get damaged, especially if it's really important to you that that icing remain pretty. Again, you can use one of those large plastic cake carriers. And after you get it all wrapped and prepared, you can put it right back in that and put that back in the freezer. Um, you know, it's it's just up to you how you do this. If you have a stand-up freezer, the possibility of your cake getting squashed is not quite as real. Again, you are listening to the Experimental Homesteader Radio Show. I'm your host, Sherry Ann Richardson. Our call-in line is 347-215-8604, and I really want to invite you to call in and share some of your holiday-preserving tips. Share how you use some of your holiday leftovers, because we all have different ideas, and this is what this show is about, is getting all of us together and sharing our knowledge so that we can do better on our homesteads, We can get more mileage for the money. And so, again, that number is 347-215-8604. Another item you may have quite a bit of during the holidays is pies. Now, unbaked pie crusts are easy to freeze, and you simply roll out the dough, lay it flat on a piece of cardboard, and you can buy this cardboard at most kitchen shops. Look in the cake section. Look for the flat pieces of cardboard that you can put cakes on. You can buy those. You can lay your pie crust out on that. You can lay pizza crust out on that. Simply cover that with uh, some saran wrap. Put it in freezer paper because you're not likely to find a freezer bag big enough for this and you do want it wrapped. Be sure that you label this. This pie dough will keep up to three months, and this is a good way. If you're going to make pie dough for Thanksgiving, why not make some extra for Christmas? Then all you have to do is bring it out and prepare it, and it's one less step that you have to go through when Christmas rolls around. As a matter of fact, if you're making pies for Halloween, you could make the dough for your Thanksgiving pies and your Christmas pies, and you're good to go. 
The other way is to put in a pie tin, flute it, and then freeze it. You could buy aluminum pie tins at the dollar store. You know, you get two or three aluminum tins for a dollar, then your pie is ready to go. The problem with this is, if you're not careful when you put these in the freezer, the edges of the pie crust are going to break. I guarantee it. So again, you may want to put this in some kind of protective container. Those plastic cake carriers are great. They do sell special boxes for this purpose. So again, think about this because you don't want to go through all this work, bring your pie crust out of the freezer, and find that it's all crushed up. Now, if you want to save your baked pies, and again, you can save them as whole pies or you can slice them up into slices and you can put them in the freezer individually wrapped so they're ready to go, you can take out the number you need. All you have to do is completely cool the pie, wrap it in saran wrap, again, put it in a freezer bag or a box or one of the cake carriers, date it, label it, and freeze it. That's all there is to it. And, you know, these are handy tips for using, not only at the holiday time, but anytime you have a big get-together and there's a lot of leftovers. Because, again, you want to get the most mileage for your money, and this is a great way to do it.